Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about something that I kind of want to correct because I still get tons and tons of questions about it. And something I had said months and months ago, I had said I wish I had never introduced this concept at all. Um, and that is the concept of half sets for a muscle group. And it came up in the conversations because uh, I've seen again, uh, actually, Lyle McDonald actually saw him bring this up at one time, that when it comes to counting volume, look, a lot of coaches know that sometimes in exercise, it doesn't really fully work a muscle the way that we would like, let's say maybe rows for your biceps, right? Because rows, we, we know based upon the research, rows cause less growth, less stimulation of the bicep than both chin-ups, pull-ups, curls, all that stuff do, uh, just due to the nature, the angle of the pull, but they still cause significant hypertrophy when it's looked at in studies. It's just they cause a little bit less. Um, and that would be an example of something that we would say, okay, that's a half set for a muscle. Okay, it's something that incompletely works the muscle, but still stimulates it enough that it would cause measurable growth. And here's the problem we have. When I do that, I've seen people try to count everything as half sets. Right, they'll come in and they'll say, well, this is a half set, that's a half set. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's exercises to where that muscle is being worked very, very effectively. Like I had one of my, my really young new clients at one time, one who, is, who I'm no longer working with, uh, who had decided that bench press was a half set for front delts, that it was a half set for triceps, all this stuff. You guys see the problem there? Even if we want to look at and say, okay, the bench press causes less tricep hypertrophy than a, a, a tricep extension, mainly due to not all the heads being worked the same, particularly with rep work relative to heavy work, right? It, it's completely different when we go heavy. It's also completely different when we go with, say, advanced power lifters on all these things, right? Because what happens in the EMGs with advanced power lifters, when we start looking at things like squats or bench press, everything gets lit up. In other words, a you see really, really, really high activation in the pecs, front delts, and triceps when a power lifter benches, even when they do rep work with it in studies, so much so that we can't tell a close grip and a wide grip apart on the EMG. We can't tell them apart when power lifters do it. Novices is where we get all that, in, that info from to where we see, hey, they're different. Same thing, we start getting into squatting and, and things. You can't really tell quad and glute activation apart <laughs> when they start squatting because these are individuals who have a very very high neuromuscular efficiency now they have high uh, neural drive those things get heavily activated but even in novices if you want to say okay maybe the triceps with the front delts are, are heavily worked your front delts can grow an enormous amount there's no reason to think it's subpar for that or for pectorals. We know that all three parts of the pec light up extremely well in EMGs when the bench press looks at them. We know that all three heads, including the upper chest, grows from a flat bench very effectively. There's no half sets in there for any of that. Again, maybe triceps. but. By that token, if we're doing a closer grip bench or a wider grip bench, we might not count it as a tricep exercise. That's the problem when we start looking at these these half sets, right? Especially when we're doing multiple exercises. And what people also fail to realize is that some muscles have a higher volume tolerance than others. This is what we've noticed also. If you were to look at the upper body, it, it appears that triceps can actually handle and benefit from more volume than pretty much any other upper body muscle. Biceps have the lowest, right? Biceps need the lowest amount of volume to see very, very good hypertrophy, you know, close to maximal. Whereas in triceps need the most. So that's kind of part of the issue we run into also there is the bench really even a half half set i don't think that it is you know even when we start looking at those studies that look at growth you know what they find is that yes triceps grow from benching only they grow a little more from extension only but they grow 
a lot more when we combine the two together. So the thing we run into is once we start doing multiple exercises that maybe work the head slightly different, I don't think we should be applying this concept at all. Either you're working a muscle or you aren't. And it doesn't matter if one exercise is an inferior stimulus unless it's because it is an extreme partial for that muscle. I don't think we can look at it in that context. If it works that muscle through the full range of motion and we have varied training stimulus because we have more than one exercise, I really don't think we should be counting anything as half sets. And if we're in that 10 to 20 sweet spot range with some muscles uh, being able to handle more, and some, some muscles are going to get worked more, glutes for example. Glutes for example. You know, if, if you're doing 15 sets for quads and 15 sets for hamstrings and you're not doing small, tiny single joint movements for them, well, your glutes are going to end up with like 30 sets, no matter what. Right? They're kind of the odd man out. But you know what? Glutes seem to be able to tolerate a lot of volume. So it's fine. But we get over to the tricep thing. Could it simply be with some of these because triceps have a higher volume threshold that say the bench by itself just didn't grow, cause them to grow enough they always grow in studies from it it's just we need that secondary exercise simply because of the nature of the muscle get into things like delts it's going to be because delts are the largest muscle in the upper body and they're the most complex with the most functions right we might have to look at individual heads we might actually have to break that up and say did this exercise work the the you know lateral head the interior head the posterior head okay but we don't need to be doing oh this muscle got half sets because it starts creating silly math uh, and it creates confusion it creates complexity because then once you start accepting that idea all of a sudden you have millions and millions of questions like I got so many questions and I still get them to this day even though I previously said hey let's not use this system let's not use this idea you guys are really messing it up let's just forget it ever happened I want to take it back I don't even know what video I mentioned it in but <laughs> I should almost find it and delete it and I don't like to delete informative videos I like to keep a record of what my opinion was at different years because it's all documented on the channel but this one is bad enough, I almost want to do that because now people are obsessing over, well, is this exercise a full set or a half set? I can't figure it out. So exactly, if you can't figure it out, then don't worry about it. Ask yourself, is it working the muscle or not? Does it count as an exercise for that muscle or not? And be done with it. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I'll talk to you guys next time.